are excited to show you how to register for this year's Fellowship Convention. Follow these simple steps to start your online experience with us. Using the internet platform of your choice, launch a search of our registration website, soffellowship.brushfire.com. You will be directed to our homepage where you will choose the registration package of your choice. Each registration tier is customized and comes with exclusive convention merchandise. Choose your tier as well as the number of registrants to be directed to the contact information page. Input your name and complete contact address so that you can receive your merchandise in a timely fashion. Select a registrant's name from the drop-down menu under billing address. Your device will automatically fill your previously entered contact information. Enter the final payment details to place your order and complete the registration process. Congratulations, you are now registered. A receipt of your registration along with all event details will be sent to your email. Thank you for your participation. We look forward to your presence at this year's Fellowship Convention. Hello and praise the Lord everyone. I'm Pastor Jason Scott. I'm the Dean and Vice President of our Shield of Faith Bible College. You can visit us online at www.shieldbiblecollege.org. Again, that's www.shieldbiblecollege.org. I want to share with you a few brief announcements about the Bible College. Right now, we have enrollment is $35. But Apostle Alexander's course, which is Restoration of the New Testament Church, is only $99. After you complete that course, our courses are normally $150. You can take courses all the way from a certificate of ministry to a doctorate degree online. I'm also so excited to announce our scholarship program. Now, we're using this evangelistically, and this is designed for you to either register a family member or a friend or even a stranger on the streets to be a part of our fellowship by coming to our Bible college and learning the Word of God. Now, the way it works is you will go on our website, you will either apply for the scholarship or send them the link, and then they can sign up. Now, when they sign up, all the fees are gonna be waived, and this is a way we're gonna draw them into our e-membership, and they can be become a part of our fellowship of churches, and eventually, you know, come to our conventions and be a part of this ministry. Now, we want you to at least go to the website during this convention and look at the different certificates, the different degrees that we have, and get excited about the Bible College. Again, go to www.shieldbiblecollege.org and be a part of our Bible College today. God bless you, and we look forward to teaching you and strengthening you in the Word of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop John Wesley Thomas from the House of Prayer Reformation Church also the Ossians of the Shield Faith Fellowship of Churches, East and Central Africa, and the Tri-County. I want to thank all of you, all of you, who attended our prayer revival, our first time Zoom virtual prayer revival in March uh, the uh, 12th through the 13th, 2021. We had a wonderful time in the name of the Lord, and, and God blessed us tremendously. I want to personally thank all of our administrators and those who have helped us uh, with the prayer revival. Special thanks go out to jo Minister Joaquina Scott, amen, and evangelist Teresa Otero, who did an outstanding job putting this wonderful program together. And I'm praying, amen, that uh, those prayers that went before is, is still generating today and still uh, uh, valid today as it was a month ago. And we thank God for all of you that was attending and stayed up all night long and prayed with us. We want to thank all of you all over the world, all over the globe, folk from Africa, India, Pakistan, Mexico, Canada, Europe, France. We thank all of you and our prayer partners and our prayer team that prayed with us all night long and God done a tremendous work. On behalf of our prelate, Apostle Henry B. Alexander, we want to thank all of you Amen. We thank him also for having the vision in the time in which we live to have us to pray without ceasing. Also, a reminder, if you want to be a prayer partner and be a part of the prayer team, you can go to our fellowship website, shieldfaithfellowship.org, and you can sign up to be a part of our prayer team. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful time at the convention. God bless you all. We bless you all again in Jesus' name. Pray without ceasing. God bless you all. Greetings. I am Lady Gail Allen, the wife of the late Bishop Ron Allen. In honor of Bishop Allen, Apostle Henry Alexander, Bishop Marty, to the Shield of Faith Christian Center, to the Shield of Faith Fellowship of Churches of Northern California, I would like to say thank you, all of my brothers and sisters, for your prayers, your support, your acts of kindness, your love, your gifts, your flowers, the Allen family, thank you. In honor of Bishop Ron Allen, Bishop Allen was the pastor of the Greater Solomon Temple Community Church. He was a man that loved God and preached the gospel. Bishop Ron Allen knew no boundaries. We thank you for being a part of his journey. He was the president of the International Faith-Based Coalition. The coalition was an avenue of getting the word out about the harms of drugs bridging the gap with people around the world, educating and teaching people that there are no boundaries. Bishop Allen's quote was, drugs have no religious preference. So in that, he took to the road from the White House to the crack house. He shared the education of the harms of drugs and knowing how important it was from being a crack addict for seven years of his life and seeing the hand of God deliver him. He wanted the world to know as God took him to another level that the body of Christ needed to know about the harms of drugs that reside in their ministries, that reside in their neighborhoods, and that we need to educate our children before they touch the poison. Those were all sayings of Bishop Ron Allen. If you've had the opportunity to meet him, talk with him, I'm sure he's probably said some of those same things to you because he believed it in his heart. And for that, we're grateful for that part of the journey in his life that you shared. Bishop Ron Allen was a California lobbyist for the state of California. He lobbied on petitions. He lobbied on bills to help pass to protect our, protect our children from the harms of drugs, to keep drugs out of our communities in the underserved areas. He was a man that had a vision that wanted to see the people move forth and not perish, a call by God to do a work. In honor of Bishop Allen, we thank you again for being a part of his journey. Bishop Ron Allen was an educator. He was also the owner of a real estate school he not only wanted to educate about the harms of drugs, he also wanted our people, the people of God, his brothers and sisters. He saw no colors. He wanted everyone to know and to be treated fairly when it come to buying houses and selling their houses and how important it was for we, the people, the people of God, the body of Christ to own property. His saying was, we was born in this land. We, we came into this land and we walk on land and we drive on land and we sell land and we live in land. And when we die, we go back to land, which is the dirt. That was a part of the things that he found so important in his heart to share with people all around this world. Bishop Allen went to the White House to share his vision of how important it was for many people to know that bridging the gap was real and that people needed to know that there are drugs out there that are killing people in underserved communities and no one's paying attention. That law enforcement is not our enemy, but we need to learn to come together and work together as a people. In bridging the gap, he brought churches from far and near. His slogan was, again, drugs have no religious preferences. So he would bring in the Sikh, the, the Hmong, the Buddhist, the Church of Scientologists, the Baptists, the Jews, the Church of God in Christ, 
in his heart, it made no difference because all of these people were people of God and they all had the same thing in common that we needed to work together as people to see change in our communities, that we need to work together to see change in our law enforcement. For that, I want to say thank you again for being a part of his journey in this life. Bishop Ron Allen was a man that will be missed greatly. His voice will still ring in the ears of those that have heard him speak. So I just thank you. I thank you. In honor of Bishop Ron Allen, continue to keep the Allen family lifted up in prayer. We thank God for this legacy and the legend that he has left behind. It will not go unnoticed. We will not let the legend and the legacy die, but we will continue to work the vision of Bishop Ron Allen. And we pray that you will stand hand in hand and help us to continue to fight the good fight of faith in honor of Bishop Ron Allen. Peace and blessings to you all. We love you. Two thousand twenty one convention. Please welcome your presiding prelate, Apostle Henry B. Alexander. Well, praise the Lord to all the saints of God. I greet you in uh, the name of the Lord. Welcome to the uh, Friday evening service of our convention for twenty twenty one. This virtual convention is blessed by the Lord, and we are certainly blessed that you are with us. I give a greeting to all of the saints of God, all the ministers, all the pastors, all of the bishops of the Shield of Faith, and to all members of our uh, executive board that leads uh, this body. We greet the people of God, even greeting you worldwide. Those of you that are watching us from the continent and the nations of Africa, those that are watching from uh, Europe and certainly from Central and South America, and all over the uh, United States, I greet you in the name of our Savior, the Lord of the Church, uh, Jesus Christ. We're so glad to be with you. I know that you've been greatly blessed in the convention by the excellent preaching on each night, the excellent and the anointed uh, seminars and classes uh, on each day and through each evening as well. We honor all those of you who have newly uh, become licensed as ministers uh, in this particular convention of 2021. We welcome all the new churches who have come in, and we greet the people of God, amen, with a great big uh, praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to uh, allow me to read a scripture as we begin, then I'm going to share some uh, news of various kinds with you, then we're going to go uh, to the word of the Lord. Uh, we'll take our text on tonight from the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 12. As I come to you tonight, uh, like so many have been uh, required to do, I'm coming to you without an audience in front of me, but I'm speaking to your heart, uh, to your church, uh, to your anointing, amen, from the heart of the Lord Jesus. I'm preaching uh, to you in these unusual virtual circumstances. The Lord bless us as we have learned how to do some very unusual things in this past year. The word of the Lord from the Gospel of St. John. Please get your Bible, though we're not together in one place, but we are together as the body of Christ. Amen. And so I'm going to ask you to get your Bible. Go to uh, St. John chapter number 12. Chapter number 12. And I think we'll begin our reading uh, at verse number 20, and then we're going to share some announcements, some news, and then we're going to share the word that the Lord has given us. All right, St. John chapter number uh, 12, saints of God, beginning at verse 20, there were certain Greeks that came to worship at the feast that is here. They came to Philip, uh, which was a Bethsaida. They desired, desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Now look at verse number 23. Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come 
that the Son of Man should be glorified. I want you to get that in your spirit. The hour is come. that The Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Verse number 25, he that loves his life shall lose it. He that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Verse number 27, now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Verse number 27 is the verse that we will focus on in uh, the next few minutes. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Let us pray. Our Father, we honor you, the people of God. We are so grateful that you've kept us until today. You've uh, protected us. You've protected our health. You've protected our walk with you, and we are saved. You've protected our ministries and the anointing that is upon our lives. And so, Lord, we are survivors through a very difficult season, a very turbulent and a tribulational time. We have survived because you have helped us. And so, Lord, we, your people, the Shield of Faith body, come together tonight on this Friday night to thank you for what you have done and to say that you're the worthy God. Lord God, all that we are, all that we have, we present to you as a living sacrifice. Now, Lord, bless and anoint this word on tonight. Bless the body of Christ. Let us gather together by this virtual service. Let your anointing, your healing, Lord God, and even your empowerment be among us. We thank you and praise you. Now we rebuke the devil. There shall be no hindering of the word of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, praise the Lord, everybody. Now I certainly uh, am greeting you with joy. I want to remind you that the heart of this Shield of Faith Fellowship is the local church and the local pastor. This fellowship is all about Jesus and it's all about you. This convention that we are sharing, my brothers and my sisters, it's all about Jesus, and it's all about empowering you and building you up as God's precious children. We have come together for a time of encouragement, uh, to encourage you in the Lord, whether you be a pastor, a minister, a uh, teacher of the youth, a teacher of the children, a worship leader, whatever your responsibility is, we come together to encourage the people of God, and also to give you prophetic direction. I want to thank God for every sermon, the wonderful preaching by the men and women of God who have ministered to you in these uh, three days. I do remind you that Saturday, being tomorrow, is the Youth Day, and I'm very excited to be a part of the things that young people will be doing on tomorrow. So this convention does not end on tonight, being Friday night, but the young people continue to minister to one another through tomorrow as well. We pray for them. I want to, before I pray, remind you uh, to remember uh, some that have gone on recently within the last, uh, really, a couple months now. We lost uh, our dear Bishop Ron Allen uh, in Sacramento, uh, California, pastor of Greater Solomon Temple, uh, he passed on uh, to be with the Lord Jesus, and what a fine and wonderful man uh, he is in the Lord, going from us into the presence of the Lord, and we're praying for Greater Solomon Temple and for our First Lady, Pastor Gail, and remembering Bishop Ron Allen for the wonderful man of God that he was when the Lord allowed him to be here with us. We're also remembering Bishop Jacob Odongo, some of you would have known him. He was our bishop in Nairobi, Kenya for many years, for perhaps 20 years or so. Uh, we worked with Bishop Adongo in ministry. And since we last met for our convention, 
the Lord called Bishop Jacob Adongo home into the presence of the Lord. We are praying for his dear wife, uh, First Lady Alice. We're remembering her in, in prayer. And then lastly, I'm thinking of Pastor Jackson Gathenji, and we lost him uh, to heaven just this past week. It's been about seven days now. That the Lord called home uh, Pastor Jackson Gathenji, uh, the husband of Bishop Grace Gathenji, also in Nairobi, Kenya. What a wonderful man of God. We thank God for every day that we shared together in ministry with these men of God. Now, I want to give you on another note, uh, just one or two points of good news. We congratulate uh, Bishop uh, Alan Young and the Saints now in Maynard, Texas, because they are building a new church there uh, right off the interstate, a wonderful uh, undertaking. They've broken ground. Amen. They've purchased the land and they are ready to move forward in building that great church, uh, that church there in Austin. It's a church that we love very much. Bishop Marty and I visited many, many times there and preached there year after year. And we greet all the saints there. We are praying for uh, Bishop Allen uh, Young and First Lady Veronica and the saints there in uh, Maynard now. All right. Also, congratulations to Bishop Charles Dorsey and the saints in Altadena. They have purchased property uh, in recent times. They're getting ready to reconstruct and build and we're very encouraged by the wisdom amen and the grace of god that is on that wonderful uh, lifeline church there in the great city of altadena so congratulations to bishop dorsey first lady lisa to all the saints there we extend our congratulations i think it is very important that i bring you up to date concerning uh, our 50 by 20 initiative what do we call it, saints of God? We call it evangelizing America. Now, what am I referring to? Well, the Lord has given us a mandate. The executive board of the fellowship has agreed uh, that it is our responsibility to put a footprint in every state in the United States, all 50 of the United States. Uh, that is where we, as a shield of faith, are determined to participate in the work of God. Many of you are aware of that. And our report, our progress report, is that as of now, we are in 37 different states across America. And we are very thankful uh, for that. We honor God for that. We know it is a call of God on this fellowship. And so I ask that you would pray and rejoice with us as we continue to move forward. I want to acknowledge uh, several bishops elect that have been uh, commissioned by the board to begin work. Now, we will not consecrate any of them in this service because of the unusual nature of our meeting. But next year, by the grace of God, when we can meet together in person again, we'll be consecrating the men of God who are already at work. I'll tell you where they are working. Bishop-elect James Evans is developing the diocese of the great state of Pennsylvania. Bishop-elect uh, Michael Daniels is working in the state of Florida. Bishop-elect James Reed is working in the state of Maryland. Amen. Uh, Apostle Harrison Nichols, kindly, even though he has his own ministry moving also, is developing the Diocese of Ohio. And Bishop-elect David Evans, a very fine man, is working in our nation's capital, in Washington, D.C. as a separate uh, diocese. I want you to be aware of that, saints of God. I want you to rejoice in it, and I want you to pray for these men of God. And next year when we come together, we'll have a wonderful time of celebration as we consecrate them formally and in person. Now, before I preach, I also want to tell you that there's something wonderful happening that is the developing of the shield of faith credit union, a financial institution that God is raising up under the uh, strategic oversight uh, of Bishop uh, Rick Johnson, our first assistant presiding bishop. He's working with some wonderful uh, committee members and team members to do the early work of creating a financial 
institution that will be a blessing to the saints and a blessing to our churches. And so please be aware, as you've participated in the convention, you've seen commercials concerning the Shield of Faith credit union that is in formation, and please be aware of that. Also, one more bit. I'm going to the Word in just a moment. But I want to remind you of the Shield of Faith Prayer Network. Now, for those of you that do not know, we recently had a worldwide prayer meeting. We had uh, men of God prayed from Europe and from Africa and from Mexico and from states all across these United States. We prayed all through the night. And so many, many, many of the saints were together by means of a Zoom call, a live Zoom call where we prayed all through the night. I believe it was from 7 in the evening until 7 o'clock the next morning. The saints of God labored in prayer. What I'm saying to you, the Lord has put it in my spirit to raise up a team of about 500 is the figure that I can't get away from. 500 committed intercessors who will be ready at a moment's notice to get a text message, to receive a phone call, and to go into prayer. Whenever there is a need, whenever there is a spiritual opportunity, whenever there is a crisis, whenever there is an attack of the enemy, amen, uh, we will be able to call together. But I need you to make the commitment. So I'm asking you, even perhaps tonight, you'll send that text, you'll send that email to the fellowship headquarters and let us know, Apostle Alexander, I'm ready to be a prayer warrior. You can count on me at a moment's notice to spring into prayer and stand up against the powers of darkness and pray in the kingdom of God. So what am I talking about? The Shield of Faith Worldwide Prayer Network. The Word of God said that men ought always to pray, not to faint. And Paul wrote that we should pray without ceasing. I know that you're giving me a great big amen wherever you are wherever you are. Now, let me say one thing more. Thank you for your patience. Our convention is only once a year. It's important that we take time to unify ourselves so that we know what is going on among us. Amen. The Bible College, can I mention that to you? Shield of Faith Bible College, online, fully accredited, degrees from credentials through associates, bachelors, masters, and up through the doctoral degrees are all ready to serve you. I'm so grateful that we are ready to serve you. I am asking you to take advantage. Education is power. Knowledge is power. Amen. And we are going to be knowledgeable in the things of God so that we can move the kingdom of God forward. So would you please be conscious of the Shield of Faith Bible College. Now the Lord bless you. The last thing I want to say before I preach, we as the fellowship want to give a special citation to Bishop Herschel Strother and his dear wife, Dr. B.J. Strother. And we, the board of bishops, have agreed to confer on them what we're calling a Lifetime Achievement Award for the work of God that they have done. Now, Bishop Strother has been a pastor and a preacher uh, for many years, perhaps I would say uh, 40 years or so at this time, done tremendous work for the Lord, a great healing ministry. But I want to single him out for what the Lord has done through Bishop Strother, Dr. B.J., in the nations of India and Pakistan. Seven years ago, the Lord brought Bishop Strother to my mind, and the Lord Jesus told me to place Bishop Strother over the nations of India and Pakistan. Some may have laughed at that. When he was placed over that part of the world, they had only one church between India and Pakistan, but I'm so glad to announce that as of today, they have 130 churches in those nations with 20 more churches that are immediately seeking to join this fellowship. Over the years, they have sent Bibles over to India and Pakistan. They have translated uh, the restoration book that God gave me to write into the Hindu language and distributed it through India and through Pakistan in particular. They have sent 
sewing machines to them so the churches can start their own businesses. Amen. Rather than uh, continuing to uh, give a fish in the cliche, we have taught those churches how to generate their own income. So now by giving them uh, sewing machines, amen, they are able to begin and have begun their own businesses so that we don't have to continue sending money to them. But now they can generate their own funds and thrive based on the wisdom of Bishop Herschel Strother. So Bishop Strother, Dr. BJ, please let it be known that your peers in ministry, we celebrate you. We honor the grace of God that is in you. We say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. We know the Lord is pleased. And now Bishop Strother, Dr. BJ, have wisely asked for relief, and there is a transition. They're going to be turning that work over to one of our bishops in the next six months after this transitional season. I'm glad to announce that Bishop-elect James Evans and his dear wife will be taking up the work in Pakistan and India that Bishop Strother and his wife have done, amen, for these uh, past years. And so we are praying for Bishop Evans and for his dear wife uh, that God's grace will be on them, that they will stand on the shoulders of Bishop Strother and take the work of the Lord to a greater height in that part of the world. I thank you, saints of God, for letting me do the business of this convention. And now we're going to go to the Word of God. But thank God, all things must be done decently and in order. The word of the Lord that we're looking at tonight comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 12, with a focus on verse number 27, where the Lord Jesus said, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Our subject tonight, as I preach the word of the Lord that God gave me to give you, is that we are a church prepared for this hour. We are a church prepared for this hour. You will have noticed by now, saints of God, that every sermon, every teaching in this convention was built around that theme, prepared, not preparing, not in preparation, but prepared. That is the theme that God gave me back in November. As I began to think about the year 2021, I began to seek the Lord. And the Lord told me to tell you that you should echo the message that the church of Jesus Christ is prepared, not preparing, not in preparation, but prepared for this hour. We are a prepared people. Revelation chapter 19 Verse number seven, saw the church in heaven as the wife, the bride that has made herself ready, a prepared people. As I talk to you about this tonight, the word of the Lord in Romans chapter five tells us that we have, we are justified by faith. We have peace with God and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. But the Lord said, not only do we rejoice in hope of the glory, but also we glory in tribulations. Knowing this, that tribulation worketh patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. I want you to see what God has done for us in preparing the people of God. He said, we rejoice, we glory in tribulations. How can we glory in tribulations? We do it because we know that tribulation produces patience, and patience gives us an experience, and experience generates hope, and our hope is never disappointed. I want you to tie into that scripture, saints of God, bishops, pastors, Look at that scripture with new eyes. The Holy Ghost through Paul says, 
we are to glory in tribulations. Now, what are you saying, Apostle? The year 2020 was a year of tribulation. It was not the tribulation, saints of God, but it was a year of tribulation. It was a year of great trouble. So many died. So many were sick. So many lost jobs. So many lost income. So many were dislocated. So many churches were frustrated. The year 2020, uh, when we went into it, the Lord said we would need understanding of the times. When we went into the year, God told us to be careful to seek to understand the times. And as we watched the times unfold last year, we found that we were in a season of great tribulation. But watch it now, because tribulation was working for us. What did it do? Tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation produces patience. Last year, you learned to be patient. There were some places you could not go. There were some things you could not do. There were some church services we could not have. And you learned to be patient in the adversarial and adverse circumstances of last year. The tribulation of 2020 worked in you and made you more patient. There's not a one of you that is not more patient than you were one year ago. Amen. But then patience gives us an experience with God. As we wait patiently, the scripture said, my soul, wait thou only on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Our, our patience gives us an experience with God. We've learned that if we wait long enough, God will come through. Experience then gave us hope. All right. We found out the God that delivered us last time will deliver us again. The God that brought us through the COVID, he will bring us through whatever this year might bring your way. We are not anxious. We are not worried. We are not uncertain. We are not timid. We are not concerned. We are not full of fear because the same God that delivered us from the lion and the bear will also deliver us from whatever this year will bring our way. So saints of God, we have been prepared when we look back at the virus, when we look back at all the health restrictions and the different uh, colors that kept us locked in the house. Those things were tribulations that gave us patience, that gave us experience, that gave us hope. And our hope in Jesus Christ will never be disappointed. And now we come into the new year, knowing that the past year really worked for our benefit. God took some things out of us last year, brothers and sisters. God put some things in us last year. God did some things with us, for us, and to us last year. So as we turn the corner into this new season now, amen, we are prepared for what God has in mind. That's what God told me to tell you. That is the theme for our fellowship around the world. God has prepared a people, and I say to you tonight, the title of my message is A Church Prepared for This Hour. This Hour. Oh, what an hour, what a time we live in, brothers and sisters. It is my responsibility as your presiding officer to make sure that you understand the significance and the spiritual temperature and the tenor of these times. We are living in very, very unusual unorthodox times. We're living in strange and perplexing times. We're living in the beginning of sorrows. This is a difficult day. We are, we believe, the last generation of the church of Jesus Christ. We believe that the Lord is likely to come in our lifetime. We see the signs of the times. We are able to see that uh, we're living in very dark Days and, and days in time past were not as they are today. And I'll, I'll impress you with some of the uh, strangeness of our time. Some of you know just uh, maybe this past weekend or so, a young man created something, a silly, foolish childish thing called Satan shoes. And, and, and oh, he's just excited. He made 666 of them, 666, and, and supposed to put a drop of human blood in the shoe and a pentagram. And people that wear those shoes are uh, letting us know that they are not afraid of Satan and they're really embracing the evil of this world. Well, that's just childish 
foolishness, those of us that are saved, we know there's nothing to that kind of foolishness. But such things as that show us how confused this day is, how dark this day of transgender people is, how dark this day when there is so much immorality, there is so much of racism and hatred and corruption in politics, and these things, they do not distress us. They do not upset us. They do not take our joy, but they make us aware, and I must call you to be aware of how important you are at this hour. John was the forerunner for Jesus Christ himself. He was a man prepared for his time. So we have Esther, we have Joseph, but can I tell you, the man above all men prepared for that time was Jesus Christ. Word of God said that God sent forth his son at the, in the fullness of time. God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Jesus Christ came into the world to serve at just the right time. Amen. Daniel had prophesied when Messiah would come and in the hour when we needed him, in the hour when we needed the Lamb of God, in the hour when we needed the blood for propitiation, Jesus Christ came into the world right on schedule to be what we needed him to be, to do what God had ordained him to do. And he laid down his life. And I'm telling you, God is a God of timing, a God, a God of timing. Now, saints of God, I want to make sure that you understand, shield of faith, pastors and bishops and saints, I want to make sure you understand the difficult assignment that we have in these dark days. I, I, I believe that our assignment is the most difficult assignment that the church of Jesus Christ has ever had. I know in the days of the apostles, there were martyrs and they were, there were some who were killed for what they preached. But now we're in the harvest season. The word of God said that the end of a thing is better than the beginning. We are here at the time when Satan is doing his best. The word of God said iniquity would abound and the love of many would wax cold. The word of God said in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan came down angry, knowing that he had but a little season. I want you to know that we are in a fight to the finish. We are in a fight with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and the rulers of sp and, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. But God ordained us in this time because God knew that we could stand in this time. What are you saying to me, apostle? I'm saying God chose you for this hour pastor, no matter how big your church, how small, amen, no matter how much money flows across the offering table, no matter if anybody knows your name, I want you to know you are not incidental. Deacon, you are not an accident. Youth workers, you are not an accident. Altar workers, you are not an accident. But everyone that is saved, everybody that God called, every one of you that God gave his Holy Spirit to, every one of you that was baptized in Jesus' name, you are called for a purpose. You are set for this hour. I'm so glad to share ministry with you. I'm glad that in these dark days of the LGBT, we can link arms together and stand up and say that holiness is still right. We can keep on laying hands on the sick and watching them get well. We can keep on bringing men and women and boys and girls to the altar laying our holy hands on them and watching God pour out the Holy Ghost and fill them with his spirit. Yes, I know it's dark out there, but the word of God said that the path of the righteous is a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. And so it is my job to arrest your attention before we leave this convention and let you know how essential you are in God's plan. Every one of us has a job, an opportunity, and a responsibility, and a privilege to serve in this particular hour. It is a most difficult hour, and that brings us down to Jesus Christ in John chapter number 12, because we see our Lord getting ready to die. Can I take you there, please, to John chapter 12, to the scripture that we read, and I want you to look at it through the eyes of Revelation. I want you to see that Jesus is on his way to the cross. Listen now, they are coming to see him in chapter 12. They came to Philip 
And Philip brought him to Andrew, and Andrew brought him to Jesus, and Jesus said to them, you, you're all excited about my ministry, but you don't realize what hour this is. You're here celebrating me, but you don't realize what hour this is. He said in verse number 23, listen, saints, listen, saints, listen, listen, people of God, listen. He said, the hour is come. The hour has arrived that the Son of Man should be glorified. Oh, help us to understand, Lord, what you're saying. When he said glorified, he did not mean celebrated. He did not mean faded and, and his name put up in lights. He said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Hear me, people of God. What is Jesus saying? When he talked about being glorified, he was talking about being crucified. What was he saying to us? He was saying the hour has come that the Son of Man is getting ready to die. The hour has come that the Son of Man is getting ready to have uh, thorns in his head and nails in his hand and humiliation and disgrace and abuse. The hour is come, but that is my glorification. Lord, why would you say that to us? Because there's no greater glory than to do the will of God for your life. No matter what that will may be, no matter what that call is, the moment you step into the center of your call, that is the hour of your greatest glorification. Now, it may not be pleasant. It may not be easy. It may seem difficult. It may seem unfair. It may may feel like a sacrifice. It may feel like a burden, but the call of God on your life is what God has ordained. You and I have no control over that. And so the Lord went on to say in verse number 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it is just alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. What are you saying, Jesus? Uh, I'm saying, and they're not understanding, uh, that the time has come for me to do my ministry. The time has come <clears throat> for me to be glorified. Uh, when I say, God, not my will, but yours be done. The time has come that I must be planted in the ground so I can multiply the people of God. There can be no church if I don't die, said Jesus. I know my role. I know my responsibility. I know my assignment. But I also know the time that it is. It is time for me to die. It cannot be next year. It could not be the year previous to this. But it is the time right now that God has ordained for me. Hear me, Bishop. Hear me, Pastor. God has put you where you are for this moment in time. We need you to preach. We need you to fast and pray. We need you to teach God's word. We need you to disciple God's children. The Lord Jesus said in verse number 25, whoever loves his life will lose it, but he that hates his life in this world will keep his life for eternity. He said in verse number 26, if any man is going to go with me and serve me, let him follow me. I'm going to the cross. And if you want to be my disciple, you've got to go to the cross as well. You've got to follow me to the cross that has been ordained for your life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen. The Lord is calling us to understand that this hour is not something that just happened. But here we are preaching in the year 2021, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of all the confusion, in the midst of great, great, unusual political turmoil and loss of values in a post-Christian culture when many people do not love the Lord as they did before. Amen. The Lord called us for this hour. Look at verse number 27, because that is the key verse in all of this passage, people of God. He said, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour Jesus said, no, I can't pray that prayer. He said, no, he said, he said I, feel, I feel a burden. I feel a weight. I feel a heaviness. I know now that, 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 that it's, it's, it's all about to hit. I know that, that the enemy is coming. The soldiers are coming. The nails are coming. The spear is coming. And my soul is troubled. 
Amen. I, I, when I look at it in my, in my own emotions, amen, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go to Calvary. I don't want to become sin. I don't want to lay down my life. But Jesus said, but what can I pray? I cannot pray a prayer that lets me out of my responsibility. I cannot talk my way out of my assignment. Child of God, I want you to know your assignment is glorious. What God has for you, it is a glorious thing. Yes, pastor. Yes, bishop. Yes, missionary. It will have moments of difficulty. There will be times that you'll be misunderstood. There will be times that it will seem like your ministry is futile. But God told me to tell you and remind you that you are right in the position where God wants you to be. I want you to know that God thought enough of you to put you in these times. Amen. I, I, I'm thinking about Job now. Amen. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Amen. Job was minding his business. He wasn't doing anything to anybody, but God had so much confidence in Job that God went to the devil. And can I put it this way? He picked a fight with the devil. He told the devil, there's a guy down there. You ought to check him out because this guy will never fail me. He will never turn away from me, no matter what he goes through, no matter how difficult it is. But this man is going to stand. Amen. And the Lord let Satan turn all of his vitriol, all of his hatred, all of his abuse on Job. Job lost everything that a man could lose. His wife, his reputation, his friends, his children, his money, his health. He lost everything, but Job held on to his integrity. I want to say to you again, my brothers and sisters, in this year of 2021, amen, I want you to know God thought enough of you to put you here. God did not let you pastor back in the 1950s and the 60s when people loved God like they did, but God saved you because he knew you could represent him in this hour when some might have turned aside. You have something down in you, like, like, like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I cannot stop doing the work of the Lord. So, brothers, as we have come to this convention, God told me to tell you that you are prepared for this hour. You're going to pass the test. You're going to stand. You're going to be strong. You're going to do everything that is needed. You're going to keep on building your church. I'm prophesying to you now, Bishop. I'm prophesying to you, Minister. You're going to keep on winning souls. You're going to keep on battling baptizing men and women. You're going to keep on watching the Holy Ghost poured out in your church. Amen. God is going to show himself faithful and you're going to show yourself strong because God has given you power. He's given you heaven's best. He's given you what you need to stand. We have the greatest power in time and eternity. It is greater than nuclear power. It is greater than any kind of a chemical reaction. It is the power of the spirit of the living God. Amen. And if the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead be in you, Paul said, will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit. So what I'm saying to the people of God is that you've been ordained for this hour. Now we're in 2021. We came through 2020. We suffered through. We cried through. We sought God. We scratched our head. Amen. We looked for answers and God proved himself faithful. God built us up over this past year. God did something in us and we come into this new year stronger than we were when we came into 2020. We see God more clearly than we ever saw him before. And now we are ready and you are ready. Your church is ready. God has assembled a team in your church. You have the right deacons. You have the right ministers. You have the right young people. You have what it takes to do what God has called you to do. Every church is different. My assignment is not yours. Yours is not mine. But the assignment that God gave you to do, I want to let you know he gave you every resource. He gave you every person. He gave you every anointing. He gave you the strategy. Amen. He's given you the favor that you can serve God 
in this moment. I want to tell you to tell the devil when he begins to talk crazy to you, talk back to the devil and tell him we are a prepared people. We are ready for this hour. Amen. It is not unexpected. The word of God let us know that in the last days it would be very dark, but there's something about being prepared. You are strong when you can foresee what you're going to have to deal with. Amen. I remember uh, when my wife was going to give birth to our children, they had a class called, uh, can I say it? It's called the Lamaze class. And they teach a woman how to get ready for the pain that she's going to go. They teach her how to breathe. They teach her how to focus. They teach her how to relax because there's something about being prepared when you know what's coming. You can take what you could not take before because you knew what was coming. I'm here to tell you, God has taught us how to stand. God, let us know that in the last days, perilous times would come. But he said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so I speak a blessing on every one of you that is listening, every one of you in this convention. I pray, and I want you to know, I pray for churches all over the world. I don't just pray for the Shield of Faith churches. I pray for the churches in the Pentecostal assemblies. I pray for the assemblies of God. I pray for the United Pentecostal Church. I pray for every pastor in every church that is preaching the gospel that God would perfect and finish what he is doing in us. I want you to know that as we go through this year, I don't know what is going to happen this year. I don't know what June will bring. I don't know what October will look like. I don't know what the virus will do or not do. I don't know what the economy is going to do, but this I do know that we are a people carefully prepared by God. God did not prepare us to fail. He did not prepare us to go down. He prepared us to prosper. He prepared us to be blessed. He prepared us to be strong. And we are that prepared, prepared, prepared people of God, prepared to go up in the rapture, prepared to leave Southern California when the trumpet sounds and take up off the ground and go through the sky into the presence of God, prepared to stay prepared to fight, prepared to build, prepared to expand, prepared to be holy, prepared to praise God, prepared to rejoice. Amen. We are brought to this hour. And Jesus said, I cannot pray to be relieved from this hour. This is my calling. This is my assignment. This is what I'm in the world for. I came to the world to do my ministry. I came to the world to be a pastor, to be a bishop, to be an apostle. I came to the world to win souls, to stand flat-footed in sound doctrine and teach the way of holiness. And so even though it may seem difficult, but God did a work in you last year. God put something in you last year, pastor. God put something in you while you were at home locked in. There was a prayer that got through. There was an anointing that came down. There was a work that God has done in us. We are not feeble. We are not intimidated. We are not confused. But we walk by faith and not by sight. And we have in us the victory that overcomes the world. That is our faith that we have in God. As you leave this convention, I want to make sure that every one of you going away know that you are prepared by the work of God in your life. Stay in that place of preparation. Don't back up from it. Be ready continually for your moment. God has done a great work. Some fell away, but you did not. Some became confused, but you did not. Some Maybe, as they say, threw in the towel, but you did not. Some lost their way, but God has prepared your heart. We are a prepared people. I want you to be confident in God. I want you to know that you can do all things through Christ. You were brought to the world for just this time and just this circumstance. Now I'm going to pray for you. I want to bless your life. And so would you, wherever you are, I'm going to ask, would you bow your head as a step of faith and receive? Father, we thank you.
for this prepared people. We thank you for the work that you've done in us. We thank you because you ordained us, Lord. We didn't call ourselves. We didn't start our churches. We didn't begin ministries. Lord, we didn't take this honor to ourselves. You said no man takes his honor to himself, but he that is called of God as Aaron was. So, Lord, you called us. You ordained us. You sent us out to bear fruit. It is your sovereign will that you cause our fruit to remain. Whatever we ask the Father in your name, it shall be given unto us. So, Lord, we honor you today. I pray a blessing upon every member of every church all over this country, even all around the world. There's so many wonderful organizations. But, Lord, I'm praying right now for those who are part of the Shield of Faith body. Let us be encouraged. Help us to know continually that we are prepared for our moment. We are not weak. We are not easily defeated. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. I pray for every pastor that you would give him strategy and resources, O oh God. Cause him to find favor with his people. Give every pastor the help that he needs to do his work. I pray for every pastor's spouse, the wife or the husband of that pastor, as the case may be. I pray for families that work, marriages that are peaceful and satisfying, that bring glory and honor to God. I pray for children that obey. I pray for churches that are united in love, unity, no disharmony, no division, no depression, no sadness, no loss of focus. God, I pray a blessing right now. Lord, I have authority to speak that blessing. As the leader of this group of people, I speak the blessing of the Lord over every one of their churches, every one of their homes, all that they set themselves to do. We thank you. It is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Now, Lord, you've given us so much in this convention and all the different teachings, the seminars, the classes, moments of instruction, moments of worship, moments of prophetic direction. Lord, you've spoken to us. God, we receive your word. We're going to be doers of the word, not hearers only. We thank you because we're going to go out and be fruitful. We thank you because we know that we know that we know that we are a prepared people. And so we thank you. Now bless the young people on tomorrow. Lord God, let their time together be wonderful and fruitful. We thank you for all that you're going to do for them. We speak a blessing over our young people. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to the end of the Friday night service, I do want to remind you to respond to the Bible college, respond to the prayer network. Amen. Please support your fellowship with your giving. Thank you for your financial love and uh, doing such a good job. Thank you that every need shall be met. I speak a blessing upon everyone that gives. Amen. I pray that God will give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Be encouraged. Continue to be in contact with us. Communication is so important to a fellowship such as this. We must stay in touch. We're all over the country. We're all over the world. So we need you to text us. We need you to email us. Call as you need to. But let's stay knit together so we can meet the needs one of another. Thank you for being a part of this convention. Invite others to join us. Invite others to join our fellowship. Spread the word. God is doing something great in the Shield of Faith movement. God bless you until we see you again. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Bishop George L. White, Senior Secretary General of the Shield of Faith Fellowship of Churches International. I pray that you are enjoying this virtual convention. I believe it's one of the best ever. I believe that many of you are being blessed tremendously. I know I am. I want to challenge your heart today concerning giving. I want to just speak to your spirit just for a few minutes. This is a part that we can all be a part of. This is the part that we can all do our part. What's so wonderful about it that Jesus, when he talked about giving, when he talked about sowing, he talked about talents. He never said that everyone would give the same amount, but he did say everybody would should operate with the same commitment. And that's the same thing I'm saying to you today. It's together we cause this fellowship to be as phenomenal as it is. It's your gifts and your love and your support that has caused us to be the fellowship that we are in right now for over two decades. And it's our unified efforts that causes us to continue 
to expand all over the globe. Apostle have said continually how the Shield of Faith Fellowship of Churches are in every continent of the earth. Let me tell you how that happens. Because it's a liberal hearts just like you that causes ministry to go around the globe. Every dollar that you sow, large or small, it helps in every way. Oh my God. And we want to let you know that you're not taken for granted, but you're very important to us. We even prayed during this convention that with the same love and the same liberality of heart that you have right now, continue to give and continue to sow as the Lord speaks to your heart. This is a time to do that. We have various platforms that you can give. You can go to the website. You can call the headquarters and they will happily receive your gifts. And God will not forget your labor of love. He will reward it. Oh, yes, he will. I said it once before and I'll say it again. We get a double blessing when we serve the Lord. He says, no man has forsaken mother, father, sister, brother, husband, and wife and shall not receive a hundredfold now in this life and the life to come. So guess what? We get blessed now and we get blessed in the hereafter. We get doubly blessed because we're sacrificing to the things of the kingdom of God. We thank you so much. We applaud you greatly for your sacrifices. Love you all and appreciate you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for your liberality. God bless. Praise the Lord, everyone. We trust that you're having a great time at the Shield of Faith Fellowship Convention. And we'd like to remind you a few ways that you can support the ministry. First, you can visit us at shieldfellowship.org. That's shieldfellowship.org. And you can pay securely with your credit or debit card through PayPal. You can also pay through Zelle. Now that's through your bank and you wanna give at the email giving at shieldfellowship.org. That's giving at shieldfellowship.org. You can also pay through Givelify. Now, if you're going to use your app through your phone through Givelify, then you want to make sure to pay the Shield of Faith Fellowship. Now, for those of you who want to mail it in, you can mail in Attention Fellowship at 337 North Vineyard Avenue, Suite 400 in Ontario, California. That's 91764. Now you can also call in and you'll reach me directly at 909-629-6294. That's 909-629-6294. I'm at option one and I'll be available to take your secure payment on your debit or credit card. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you. God bless you.